Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, and I know I'm going to be catching all kinds of shit for today's video, because it's a submarine. This is the Shadow Government in the US Navy Tier 8 submarine, the USS Salmon. Lead ship of her class, he's in a Tier 9 arms race battle. Jingles, I thought you hated submarines. I don't hate submarines. I should probably qualify that statement. I don't hate submarines in World of Warships. I think they're complete bullshit, because they are, for reasons which we'll go into. Uh, I hate aircraft carriers, because they're also complete bullshit. But unlike submarines, which are one-trick ponies, uh, they're very good at one very specific thing, and pretty bad at everything else. Aircraft carriers, in the other hand, are just great at everything, and stupidly easy to play. Submarines, not so much. Well, they can be easy to play, in the same way that almost everything else in World of Warships can be easy to play, it's just not that easy to do well in. Unlike carriers, which are both easy to play and easy to do well in, and also ruin the enjoyment of every other ship and vessel type in the same battle. But anyway, enough about carriers, I think I have made my position clear on that particular subject, abundantly clear. Submarines, the Shadow Government in the USS Salmon, Tier 9, arms race battle. Why a submarine replay? Well, two reasons. The first reason is that the Shadow Government here in the USS Salmon is about to have an absolutely stonking battle in this Tier 9 arms race battle. And the other reason is that while submarines are not particularly popular, and by that I don't mean hardly anybody's playing them, I mean, not popular in the way that aircraft carriers aren't popular. Submarines aren't much liked by people who don't play submarines, but at least they're not detested the way aircraft carriers are. Nevertheless, if you don't like playing against submarines, it would probably do you well to understand exactly how it is that submarines do the things that they do, a sort of know-your-enemy type of deal, which is basically what today's video is about. That and the fact that the Shadow Government is going to have an absolutely amazing game. Which is highly unusual for submarines in World of Warships, because they rarely seem to have that much of an influence on the outcome of the battle, and I don't know if that's because they're just not played very well, or because they're underpowered. Stop laughing at the back there. <laughs> I suspect it's because, generally, submarines are just not played very well. Which, let's face it, is true of most types of ship in this game. The Shadow Government, however, definitely seems to know what he's doing. And I freely admit that, as a non-submarine player, I don't fully understand absolutely everything that the Shadow Government is doing in this battle. I mean, I played submarines throughout several different iterations of the early testing process and was thoroughly just disgusted with how completely bullshit they were. But that was a long time ago, and they've been through several iterations since then. So, I freely admit that I just don't fully understand exactly everything that the Shadow Government is doing here. And if there are any veteran submarine commanders out there in the comments, please feel free to chip in and point out any mistakes that I make, or anything that I just missed. I'm sure everybody else would be very grateful for your help. While I'm pointing out the good things and the bad things about the USS Salmon in particular, I'll also be pointing out the bullshit inherent in the way that submarines have been implemented into this game. And I don't mean overpowered bullshit, I mean just bullshit, because in order to make these things work, within World of Warships, they've basically had to break the laws of physics in absolutely hilarious ways. Let's start with one of the good features of this boat, its sonar ping. So, you're probably aware that in order to use their homing torpedoes effectively, submarines first have to ping the target with their sonar. And homing torpedoes were a thing in World War II. The Germans had acoustic homing torpedoes. They weren't particularly good, and they could be defeated by just not moving at full speed. And they certainly didn't work the way that they do here in World of Warships. But homing torpedoes were at least a thing. Oh, Shadow Government's just been pinged. He's having a very, very unwelcome close encounter with an enemy U-190, and it looks like there are depth charge planes on the way. He's managed to get a ping off in return, and he's letting go with his homing torpedoes. Only the one hit. Not enough to kill the enemy target. In submarine versus submarine 
combat, the salmon is at a particular disadvantage, although not under these precise circumstances because of how close that enemy U-190 is. But the salmon's underwater surveillance consumable has the lowest range of any. It's only six kilometers. Fortunately, that guy is well within six kilometers, and the Shadow Government managed to clear his own sonar ping by using his damage control, and the other guy didn't appear to have an effective target solution anyway. They're now both too close to each other for the torpedoes to arm. So full speed ahead, damn the torpedoes, ramming speed, and he takes out the U-190. Although damage control is on cooldown, he is suffering a flood, and he does not have an awful lot of health left. How much health will he have remaining before that flood is brought under control? I'm going to go with not a lot. Oh, submarines don't get heals either, so... <laughs> Whatever health he has remaining, there we go. 1,700 health. That's all the health that he's going to have to use for the rest of this battle. That whole thing, by the way, was also utter bullshit. Because submarine versus submarine combat was never a thing. I think in the entirety of World War II, the submarine only ever sank another submarine with torpedoes once, and it was largely accidental, because until things like Cold War wire-guided torpedoes or torpedoes with their own active sonar seekers became a thing, it was just not possible for submarines to fight other submarines underwater, because they're basically blind and they couldn't see each other. More bullshit. I was talking about um, effective use of the homing torpedoes on this uh, submarine, which are actually pretty good. I mean... They're an effective standoff weapon with a range of 11 kilometers. But in order for them to home in, you have to have a ping on the target. Now, of course, the target can clear that ping by using its damage control. But you only have something like a 20 second cooldown on the sonar ping, and the target has something like a two minute cooldown on its damage control. So it's not difficult to reacquire them. And I think that's one of the principal reasons why people don't like playing against submarines, especially if you're in a battleship. But the biggest bullshit thing about these homing torpedoes is their speed. 86 knots. <laughs> this is a World War II American torpedo with a speed of 86 knots. Do you know what the actual speed of the Mark 28 torpedo was? The torpedo that this boat is armed with? The torpedoes that are currently chasing that battleship and should never be able to catch it because their actual speed, well, not even actual speed, their maximum possible speed with the shortest range was 19.6 knots. Not 86. I mean, there's a six in it. <laughs> it's 19.6 knots. Um, they would generally be set to go slower in order to extend the range. And remember, these torpedoes have an 11 kilometer range. You know what their actual range was? Their effective range? 4,000 yards. Can you smell the bullshit? More bullshit. Look at the speed this thing's doing at periscope depth. I mean, it was going at over 30 knots earlier. Do you know what this thing's actual speed was? 21 knots on the surface, submerged. 9 knots. Not 27. <laughs> 9. Do you see how wargaming have had to basically throw any kind of pretense at historical accuracy right out of the window in order to make these things fit into the game. Oh, there's another couple of torpedo hits on something. And it's not just... I mean, we know that World of Warships is not a simulator, it's an arcade game. It's a game where aircraft carriers have magical pixie dust and unicorn factories under the flight decks of their aircraft carriers, magically generating new aircraft as the battle develops. It's a game where radar and sonar go through islands. Yes, I get it, fine, it's not a simulator. But, I mean, the, the cruisers, the battleships, and the destroyers are at least loosely based on the capabilities of the actual things that they're representing, but not submarines. You couldn't have realistic submarines in this game and also have them be vaguely playable. In order to make submarines not be the most frustrating and boring things to play and not be laughably easy for everything playing against them to kill, they've had to take some extreme liberties with reality. Oh, hang on a second. There go the homing torpedoes. He's lost sight of the Kitakazi, but he did manage to get a ping, so those torpedoes do appear to be homing. Is this going to be another kill? 
the Edinburgh's smoked up, but oh, the torpedoes are definitely homing on something. This may be a kill. It is a kill. He's taking out the Kitakazi. You ready for more bullshit, fact fans? <laughs> As he pings the Edinburgh over there. And we're talking here about the ping, the infamous sonar ping, which is one of the better features of the USS Salmon, by the way. It's active sonar. When it pings a target, that ping travels through the water at a speed of 600 meters per second. I'll just let you think about that for a while. <laughs> As these torpedoes that should be doing 19.6 knots, but are in fact doing 86, catch and sink the Edinburgh. So, yes. One of the good things about the salmon, when it uses its active sonar, the sonar pings travel through the water at 600 meters per second. For those of you who haven't yet figured it out, the speed of sound is not a constant, okay? It depends completely on the density of the medium through which it's traveling. Now, when sound travels through the air, at least at sea level, the speed of sound is about 340 meters per second. But since water is a lot more dense than air, the salmon's ping of 600 meters per second slightly less than twice the speed of sound in air. But that's fine, right? I mean, it should be faster. Yes, it should. It should be a lot faster. <laughs> Not 600 meters per second, 1500 meters per second. So one of the strengths of this submarine is that its sonar ping is around about a third as fast as it should be. And it gets better. I mean, there are differences as well because temperature is also a factor. Sonar or sound propagates in water faster if the temperature is higher. So you get differences in the speed of your active sonar ping, or you should get differences in the speed of your active sonar ping um, between the colder layers at depth and the warmer layers near the surface. But let's not get bogged down in the details. Wargaming certainly haven't. <laughs> right. But like I said, it gets better. Because not only does sound not travel as fast in water as it should in World of Warships, but the speed of sound in water is also apparently determined by the nationality <laughs> of the submarine doing the pinging. Because German submarines only get 500 meters per second. Oh my god. <laughs> See, these are the reasons why I don't like submarines in World of Warships. Not because they're overpowered. They're really not. But because Wargaming have not only had to take massive liberties with any kind of historical accuracy in order to make these things be vaguely playable, but they've also had to break the laws of physics. <laughs> That's why I don't like submarines. I mean, it looks like a submarine. It sounds like a submarine, but it's not like any kind of submarine I ever heard of. Anyway, this battle is not going well. I mean, there's not that much of a difference in the points between, well, okay, there's now a fairly substantial difference in the points between the two teams as the Atlantico just went down. And because this is arms race, the key area has appeared. It's in the middle of the map and, uh, if the enemy team manages to take the key area, they don't automatically win, but they effectively do because they start gaining points at a massive rate, and you're never going to come back from that. Ooh, depth charge planes. Oh yes, and another area where Wargaming got the submarine implementation completely arse about face. You would think, in a match where you have one cruiser and two submarines against one cruiser and two battleships, actually scratch that, the cruisers just died, the enemy team are now even further ahead, although... Shadow Government managed to nail one of those battleships. But they're still 200 points behind. Although, I think he's about to grab himself another kill. And here's a top tip. If you're in that situation where a submarine has just pinged you, and you've rightfully predicted that there are going to be homing torpedoes on the way, do not immediately damage control to clear the sonar ping. Wait until you at least see the homing torpedoes. Then use the damage control, clear the ping, and maneuver. The torpedoes will lose their lock, and they will miss, probably. If you just immediately clear the ping with your damage control, which then goes on something like a two-minute cooldown, the submarine's just going to ping you again 20 seconds later, and the homing torpedoes are still going to hit. In fact, a good submarine captain will probably bait out your damage control with an early ping in order to precisely do that. So don't do that. But yes, 
Enemy team still ahead, although not quite as far ahead now. And it's two submarines, both on very low health, against a mostly full health Iowa. Now, in reality, an Iowa-class battleship, a fast battleship, that's being hunted by a pair of submarines and has a good idea of where those submarines probably are, is never going to be sunk by those submarines, because it just turns around and it sails in the other direction. But, however, comma, <laughs> as I hope I've probably established by now, this is not reality. This is World of Warships. The submarines that could only realistically do nine knots submerged are now doing nearly 30 knots and they're firing torpedoes that should have a speed of 19.6 knots but do in fact have a speed of 86. So that Iowa... Well, it's not that he's proper fucked because the bullshit works both ways. I mean, he's not having a very fun time. But whereas in reality, battleships depended on escorts like destroyers and light cruisers to protect them from submarines here in World of Warships, battleships are arguably a submarine's biggest threat. Not destroyers, which were actually a submarine's biggest threat. Because in order for a destroyer to sink a submarine, it has to sail over the top of it and blast it with its depth charges. But battleships get to do that from standoff range with aerial depth charge attacks. What? <laughs> I mean, I get it. There is even historical precedent to support this. I mean, you know, if I'm being completely honest here, I think it was actually HMS Warspite in the Norwegian campaign that was the first ship in World War II to sink an enemy submarine with its aircraft. One of the Warspite's fairy swordfish float planes managed to hit and sink the U-64 in the Norwegian fjords. Uh, it wasn't even depth charges, I think it dropped 250 pound bombs on it, but it was the first time a ship-launched aircraft had ever sunk a submarine. To be completely fair to the U-64, they should never have been deployed in the fjords. Um, not optimal circumstances to be conducting submarine operations, but they were ordered in, they followed their orders, and they got themselves sunk as a result. But there is some historical precedent, at least for it. My problem is that Wargaming appear to have taken that historical precedent, you know, on one of those rare occasions where they actually like the historical version of events, and run with it until they winded themselves. <laughs> because in World of Warships, battleships are better at taking out submarines than anti-submarine vessels like destroyers. A destroyer has to risk not only being torpedoed by the submarine it's hunting, but also being spotted by the submarine it's hunting and getting shot to shit by all of the submarine's teammates as a result. A battleship, on the other hand, can just duck behind an island and send those depth charge attack planes out. Admittedly, not with complete impunity. In the case of the Salmon, the torpedoes do have an 11 kilometer range. Um, but it's significantly safer for a battleship to deal with the submarine in this game than it is for an actual anti-submarine warfare vessel like a destroyer. Again, wargaming logic. Oh, Iowa's taken out the U-190. But the U-190 also took out the Iowa, although for just a brief fraction of a second there, Shadow Government was the last vessel left alive on his team. And so that means not only did he get a Kraken unleashed, with five kills, 140,000 damage, but he also qualified for a solo warrior. <laughs> and the Die Hard award there, of course, for ramming somebody and surviving. That's not something you see anybody in a submarine getting very often. Shadow Government with nearly 4,000 base experience, and the U-190 he was divisioned up with not that far behind. A pair of extremely well-played submarines, and I think that's the key here. The fact that they were extremely well played, not that they were submarines, uh, having a very rare, for submarines at least, massively influential effect on the outcome of this battle. Well played to both of them. Hope you all enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.